Isn't it great to be here? I love that song. His kingdom, His power, His glory. That's why we've come here this morning is to worship our God, to give Him glory. Really wonderful. Thank you so much, worship team. Appreciate it. Well, you can take your seats. I don't know about you, but I woke up this morning and my day started so well because there was electricity. I could make myself some coffee. I mean, you've got to be grateful for these things, you know? You can't take it for granted. I mean, it's just like we appreciate it. It's the benefits of living in the days that we live in. I mean, we're grateful for electricity. In the past, we wouldn't even have thought about that. Just taking it for granted. Now we're grateful. Also grateful yesterday, the Stormers won. That was good, eh? Three out of three. Really great. Last week, we started a series on deception. It's a two-part series, so last week and this week. And if you missed last week, I would really, really encourage you to go and watch it because this laid a foundation. And so we're going to be carrying on with that. But last week, we made this statement. We said that all deception, all deception starts with self-deception. All deception starts with self-deception. Imagine you are... Imagine the Zambezi, beautiful Zambezi, upper Zambezi, above the Victoria Falls. And there's this kayak, people in the kayak, family group, and they're paddling down the Zambezi, and they're having a great day. They're loving life. They're paddling down the Zambezi, and loving life. Everything's going well. It's a beautiful sun's out. The birds are there. Hippos are in the corner. You can see them. You paddle past the hippos, and just enjoying life. But then... Without you knowing, there's actually Victoria Falls is just around the corner. Somebody's on the bank, sees this group paddling down the Zambezi. This guy that's on the bank knows that Victoria Falls is around the corner. So he waves at them, hey, 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 stop, 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 stop. Anyway, they paddle over. Guys, it's like, guys, you're going to die. You can't carry on. There's Victoria Falls around the corner. The people in the canoe are like, no, <laughs> you are just the fun police. You, you're jealous that you don't have a kayak. That's what it is. You are jealous that we have a kayak. You're not in a kayak. We're having a great time. You're stuck on the bank. You're jealous. Like, no, the Victoria Falls is around the corner. Really? Do you think we're stupid? Look, look how beautiful it is. The river's beautiful. It's a perfect day. Sometimes the truth is not what we want to hear. Sometimes the truth causes us to stop and change direction. Sometimes the truth causes us to actually stop and get out the boat and, get, and do something else. And my prayer is that as we share today, as we look at God's truth, this would help us to realign our lives, to stop, take cognizance, and please don't get upset with me. I'm not the fun police. All I'm doing is just holding up the Word of God. And sometimes we can get really upset. Sometimes you might even do something that you're trying to warn somebody else, and people can get upset with you. But you know, if, we, if we know that the Victoria Falls is around the corner, we're going to get desperate. Please, we're going to beg. We're going we're gonna, to we're gonna tell the truth even if it causes offense. Because we don't want anybody to die but everybody to have life, especially the life that God's created them. So do I have your permission to carry on? Is that okay? Are you comfortable? It's going to get a little bit uncomfortable in here, but we are going to look at the truth and what God's word actually says. So we said that all deception starts with self-deception. Well, let's actually take a look right at the, as far as we know, the very first sin that ever, ever took place. And it was before Adam and Eve, and it was with this person called Lucifer, who now we now know as Satan. He was in heaven, and as far as we know, he was responsible for worship. So in other words, he was responsible to give glory to God. He was an archangel, which means he was like a big deal in heaven. And this is what it describes. It talks about him in Isaiah chapter 14, verse 13. It says, you said in your heart, I will ascend to the heavens. I'll raise my throne above the stars of God. You said in your heart, you told yourself a lie first. 
self-deception. You said you can become like God. You deserve more. You can be your own God. As a matter of fact, you can, you can be right up there. And so Satan, we now know him as a deceiver, is still telling that lie to people, the lie that he first believed about himself. And all sin originates with that. All sin originates with us telling our hearts we can be our own God. We deserve better. Genesis chapter 3, Adam and Eve are in the Garden of Eden, beautiful place, Eden. And we live in George, so we know how beautiful Eden must be. Um, and so Adam and Eve are in the Garden of Eden. Everything is going well. They have peace, they have joy. They've never known fear, never known shame, never known anxiety, never known depression. Love, peace, joy, amazing. Eden. Eden not only on the outside, but Eden on the inside. Satan comes on the scene. Genesis chapter 3 says, Now the serpent was more crafty than any of the wild animals the Lord God had made. And he said to the woman, Did God really say you must not eat from the tree in the Garden of Eden? Now we know that God placed Adam and Eden in the Garden of Eden. And he said you can eat from anything, but don't eat from that one particular tree. Why would God do that? Well, because we, blessing follows obedience. And so God wanted them to intentionally have to obey him so they could experience the blessing. Pain and suffering follows disobedience. Submission is good for us. Submission is not a bad thing. Submission is a good thing. When we're submitting to God, it's a good thing. Verse 2 says, The woman said to the serpent, We may eat from the fruit of the trees in the Garden of Eden, but God did say you must not eat from the tree from the fruit that is in the middle of the Garden, Eden, Garden of Eden, um, and you must not touch it or you will die. So listen to the deceiver. Listen to what he said. Listen to his words. It says, you will certainly, not certainly die. You won't die. The serpent said to the woman, for God knows that when you eat it, your eyes will be open, and you will be like God, knowing good from evil. When the woman saw that the fruit of the tree was good for food and pleasing to the eye and desirable for gaining wisdom, she took some and ate it. She also gave some to her husband who was with her, and he ate it. Then the eyes of both of them were, were opened, and they realized that they were naked. So they sewed some fig leaves together and made coverings for themselves. Then the man and his wife heard the sound of the Lord as he was walking in the Garden of Eden in the cool of the day, and they hid from the Lord among the trees in the garden. But the Lord God called the man, where are you? Now God knew exactly where they were, but he wanted them to realize where they were. He wanted them to realize that they were lost. And Adam answered, he said, I heard you in the garden, and I was afraid. I was naked, and so I hid. I was afraid. They never experienced fear before. There was shame, so they hid. But Satan comes and he lies. He tells them three lies. And these lies are, are still what we believe when we go, of course. These are still the lies that we believe. First one is that you certainly won't die. What is the lie? There are no consequences for disobedience. There's no consequence. No. God's a good God. He won't punish you. Hell no. No, this is what people used to say in the old days. Hell's not forever. There's no consequence for disobedience. God won't, God's a loving God. He won't send people to hell. Heard that before? Lie number two. You get to decide what's right and wrong. Yeah, the Bible, you know, it's more of a guide. You can decide. You can decide what's right and wrong for you. You're the captain of your own ship, the master of your own soul. Line number three, you can be your own God. You be your own God. You're in charge. Those three lies are still the foundation of where every bit of deceit happens. And it starts in our hearts. No, surely, surely, surely there's no consequences for this. 
I get to decide what's right and wrong. I can be my own God. All temptation is an attempt to get us to live our lives independent of God in this church. That's exactly what Satan wants us to do. He, get, he wants us to get us independent from God and from church. And the consequences of sin, the consequences of sin are fear, anxiety, we'll find out in a moment, depression, shame, separation. We don't like the light, we want to hide. Suffering and eventual death. The book of Genesis is the seed book, and so whenever we want to understand truth, we always go back to the book, uh, to the book of Genesis, and look at the first 10 chapters of Genesis, because that's really where we get the foundation of truth. God lays the foundation in the book of Genesis for everything else that we believe. So Genesis chapter 4, also very interesting. Genesis chapter 4, Cain and Abel, two of Adam and Eve's sons, and it says this, Abel kept flocks and Cain worked the soil. In the course of time, Cain brought some of the fruits of the soil as an offering to the Lord. And Abel also brought an offering, fat portions of the firstborn of his flock. The Lord looked with favor on Abel and his offering. But on Cain and his offering, he did not look with favor. So Cain became angry. And his face was downcast. His face was downcast. What a description of depression. His face was downcast. Then the Lord said to Cain, why are you angry? Why are you downcast? If you do what is right, will you not be accepted? But if you do not do what is right, sin is crouching at your door and it desires to have you. But you must rule over it. Now Cain said to his brother Abel, let's go out into the field. And while they were in the field, Cain attacked his brother Abel and killed him. So Cain is there, and Abel's there, and they both bring an offering to the Lord. But Abel, the Bible says that Abel gave the first and gave the fat portions, which is the best. So God, Abel, First and best for God. First and best for God. But Cain, he gave some. He gave some. And I wonder why he did that. What was the lie that he might have told himself? Maybe he said, well, you know, let me rather hold some back so I can replant it and I'll have more seed. And then, and then next year I'll have a bigger harvest and then I'll give to the Lord. Then I'll give my best. Sound familiar? No, well, we give to God according to our budget. I don't really, can't really afford that this, this month. Or we give according to our convenience. But Abel had a different attitude. Abel put God first and gave him his best. And what's very interesting is the result of, a be, of, of their behavior affected their feelings, affected Cain's feelings. Cain became angry and downcast. And here's a thought. We don't feel our way to good behavior. We behave our way to good feelings. Let me say that again. We don't feel our way into good behavior. We behave our way into good feelings. When we honor God, when we choose to do what's right, there is freedom, there is liberty, there is joy, there is peace, there is patience. There is what the Bible describes as shalom, which is like this peace that goes into every aspect of my life. My life becomes peace. But the saddest part for me of the story is that Abel did nothing wrong. But simply because he did what was right, his brother that was in sin became angry against him and killed him. And I found that's true in my life. Sometimes you don't even have to preach to people. You don't even have to point out the error of their ways. Just by you doing what's right, you will attract anger, frustration. 
And I found, and I believe, and you might notice this as well, but the world is becoming increasingly intolerant of those that live a Christian lifestyle. Increasingly intolerant of those that are choosing to just honor God with their life. It's like those that are disobedient almost become angry with those that choose to live a righteous life. But don't let that stop you from honoring God. Don't let it stop you from honoring God. Let's jump to the New Testament. New Testament, 2 Timothy chapter 4. It says, For the time will come when people would not put up with sound doctrine. Instead, to suit their own desires, they will gather around them a great number of teachers to say what their itching ears want to hear. But you... Turn your ears away from the, they turn their ears away from the truth towards myths. But you keep your head in all situations, endure hardship, do the work of the evangelist, and discharge all the duties of your ministry. Do the work of an evangelist. That's the guy on the side of the, on the, side of the Zambezi waving at the people that are canoeing towards the edge, that are about to go over the waterfall. Hey, 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 there's a waterfall. Stop, 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 stop. Let's not, let's not stop communicate if we love people we will communicate truth we will communicate that there is that there god is real the truth is right and wrong and that salvation is available for those that repent but it says here people will turn away in the last days people will turn away from what is right and they will gather around themselves teachers that tell them what their itching ears want to hear well what do our itching ears want to hear great question what do your itching ears want to hear? What are, what are our, our sinful nature? What does it want to hear? There's no consequences for sin. There's no hell. That's what we want to hear. Hey? That we can decide what's right and wrong. That's certainly what our itching ears want to hear. That we can be our own God. That's what our itching ears want to hear. And so we gather around them and then Let's jump, in, jump down to Matthew chapter 7. This is Jesus, and he's saying basically the same thing. Jesus, in Matthew chapter 7, he says, Enter through the narrow gate, for wide is the gate, and broad is the road that leads to destruction, and many enter it. It's like saying, hey, don't follow the crowd. But small is the gate, and narrow is the road that leads to life, and only a few find it. The road to destruction is wide and easy. The road to heaven is narrow. It's a narrow road. It's not a wide road. Watch out for false prophets. They come to you in sheep's clothing, but inwardly they are ferocious wolves. By their fruit, you will recognize them. People, do people pick grapes from thorn bushes or figs from thistles? Likewise, every good tree bears good fruit, but every bad tree bears bad fruit. New Testament also says that, that, Jesus, that Satan masquerades himself as an angel of light. They come dressed in sheep's clothing. Sometimes you might see somebody dressed all in black. Ooh, that's a false prophet. No, I think the false prophets come dressed in suits and ties. Okay, not all sorts of types, but they, they masquerade. They, they look good. They look the part. It sounds good. Deception sounds good. But deception is subtle. The best lies are half-truths. Half-truths, subtle truths. And so you've got these two roads. The one road leads to destruction. The wide road, this one. The narrow road leads to eternal life. Both of them, at the sign to the entrance to both of them, both are saying, this is the way to heaven. It's not the one saying, this is the way to hell. This is the party one. This, yeah, we're going to party together in hell. No, that's not what it says. Both of them say, this is the way to heaven. But we are deceived into believing, mistakenly, that we go on the wide road. So what are some of the things that and maybe you'd recognize these, some of the, the signs, the invitations that would encourage people to go on the wide road. 
I've made a list. You're awesome. You deserve better. Remember, deception starts with self-deception. Chase your dreams. Put yourself first. It's time you put yourself first. God understands your desires. Make your kingdom great. Be who you want to be. Live for now. Truth is subjective. Grace with no change. I'll explain that a little bit later. You the boss. It's your money. You're better off alone. Recognize any of those? The road to heaven, the road to him, the road to blessing, the road to his, his presence, the road to his favor, the road to his peace. says it differently. Instead of you're awesome, he's awesome. He deserves better. Chase his dreams, not your dreams. Put him first. Don't put yourself first. Instead of God understands your desires, no, let's try to decide, let's try to understand what are his desires. Make his kingdom great. Be who he wants you to be, not who you want to be. Live for eternity. Truth is eternal and unchanging. Grace to change. Grace to change. What does it mean? We understand grace, but so often we misunderstand grace. We, we, we think we only understand the first part of grace. And grace is forgiveness, absolutely. It's God is it doesn't matter what you've done and where you've been. It doesn't matter how messed up and mistakes you might have made. God is able to forgive you. God is grace is there. But God's grace isn't there only to forgive you. God's grace is there to enable us to live a victorious life. God's grace comes and lives into us and lives inside of us so that we can overcome sin. So we don't have to be bound by sin, but we can have victory over sin. So sin doesn't determine our future, but God's grace inside of us enables us to live a victorious life over sin. And God's grace is there for those that repent. The word repent means if you're heading in the wrong direction. This is the wrong direction. You're heading in the wrong direction. And we repent. Repent means to turn around and to start walking in the different direction. So we experience God's grace when we repent, when we turn. I can't, oh, God's grace. Oh, I'm going to carry on working. Oh, God, thank you, your grace. And just carry on living for myself and moving. Oh, God's grace. No, 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 no. That, that's not how it works. There must be a change. Can't continue to go down the wrong path. God's grace, God's grace. No. No, 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 no. no. And unfortunately, it's becoming an increasingly popular lie that is spread not only outside there but even in the church and we need to be careful of that he is the boss it's his money it's not my money it's his money everything i have belongs to him and you and i were made for community and for the church satan will do everything he can to get you out of the church He'll try to get you offended. He will lie to you. He'll put thoughts into you. He will, he will do everything he can to get you out of the church. I've written down some things that might be helpful to you. These are things that I'm just evaluating. Like we get, there's so many lies out there. Like how do we evaluate some of those lies? How do we decide, is this true or is this not true? Almost like a, a test, a truth test. Ask ourselves these questions. Will this lead to peace or to division? Will it honor the church and draw me closer to it or further away from it? Does this feed into my sinful desire for self-rule? It's a great way when you're reading the word of God. 
coming across a, different, a difficult doctrine. Does this lead to feed into my sinful desire for self-rule? Does it line up with God's word? This is an important one. Does it line up with God's word? We understand that the Bible is all true. Everything in the Bible is true. And so we evaluate all truth by the Bible. But we also understand that not all truth is in the Bible. So, for example, coffee is good for you. Believe that? I think that's true. I can't find it in the Bible, but I believe it's true. It's a bit of a joke. But how about this one? The chair that you're sitting on is red. Is that true? Is that in the Bible? No, but it's true. Okay, so, for example, there are sometimes there are things that are true and that we need to do, standards that we need to live towards that aren't necessarily written as a phrase in the Word of God, but we still need to obey it. For example, you, nowhere in the Bible, as a statement or a phrase, will you find anywhere where it says that you cannot have a slave. It doesn't say that. Nowhere in the Bible does it say that slavery is wrong. You won't find it, but we know that it's wrong. So just because the Bible doesn't say it as a phrase doesn't mean it's not true. But we do need to evaluate all truth according to the Word of God. So when we read the story, when we read about God's nature, about God's character, about right and wrong, His principles for our lives, how there is narrow, we, we evaluate that and that enables us because we know God and know His nature, we know God's plans for humanity, that's how we know that slavery is wrong. But the phrase slavery is wrong is, isn't in the Word of God, isn't in the Bible. Am I making, making sense? And so we take that into lots of different things. The more we get to know God, that's how we evaluate what is true, what is not true, and the more we get to know God's Word. But the truth that we discover out there will never contradict God's Word. It'll never contradict God's Word because God's Word is unchanging. Another question we can ask ourselves is, does this behavior produce shame and hiding? Like, are we okay for what we're doing or this belief or whatever else? Are we okay for it to be put all over social media? Great question. Or would we become shameful if people really found out about that? Would it produce shame or hiding? Does it build the church or break it? Does it promote me or others? These little tests that we can do as we're evaluating truth. But I think what we should do is, let's maybe take a moment. Could you stand with me to your feet? I'm very impressed nobody has thrown anything at me. Well done. I know this is not an easy thing to hear. The truth sometimes can challenge us, but it needs to challenge us. And what we have to do is we need to be well-versed and well-equipped with the truth, not just for ourselves, but for those that we love, the world around us. And we need to have the confidence, knowing what is right and wrong. And if we're on the, Zamb the bank of the Zambezi and we see somebody about to paddle over the Victoria Falls, we need to be shouting, yay! Hey! And they might get upset with us. They might call us the fun police. That's not what we're doing. We have to believe that there is a better way. That when we follow God, there is joy, there is peace, there is grace, there is forgiveness, there is healing, there is liberty, there is freedom that's found in Him. And all of that is available for us. His favor, His grace upon our lives as we pursue Him, as we trust Him, as we submit to Him. So I'm going to pray and I encourage you to pray as well. I'm just going to come before God. Let's pray. Lord, we just want to thank you so much for your word. Thank you that it is challenging. And Lord, we just pray. Lord, we pray that you would convict us, that you would highlight areas in our lives, Lord, things that we maybe have been believing that are wrong. Change us, God. Convict us. Help us to submit to you. Help us to not want to be our own, our own boss. Not follow our dreams, but to follow your dreams, Lord.
Lord, speak to us. Challenge us and change us. Amen. Well, as we go into this worship song now, just use this opportunity just to speak to God. Maybe God's speaking to you and speak, does speak to you about things that you might, maybe just ask God for forgiveness for. So God, help me to change. Help me to honor you. Help me to live in the life that you've created. In Jesus' name. Thank you so much for watching our YouTube channel. We really pray that it, you find it helpful in your journey. And we also really want to encourage you to take your next step by signing up to join a small group or to do discovery. Thanks again for watching and don't forget to subscribe and share this with as many people as possible. And we really can't wait to see you next Sunday.